for come on in this room and let's have a sit down so we can chit chat for a little while. My name is Sheila C. Hill and this show is the ultimate go-to podcast for ambitious individuals who want to live a more fulfilling life with and be more successful. In this podcast, you're able to get valuable insights, expert tips, and inspiring stories to help you improve your lifestyle, grow your business, or just enhance your emotional well-being. In every episode, you'll gain practical tips and insightful wisdom in the company of supportive community of like-minded individuals whom I love to call Sheila's Thrive Tribe. So if you're a regular listen, listener and you've subscribed to the Sheila C. Hill Show, you're part of that Thrive Tribe. But if you're new, I would like to introduce myself. I'm your host, Sheila C. Hill, and I would like just to say hello. Hola. Como esta? Bonjour. Ni hao. Howdy. And what's up, y'all? Come on in and get comfortable and enjoy this episode on today. I'm so excited to have a guest with me today. And our Mr. Lake Wood is the owner, the CEO of Lake LWL Wood Solutions. And also he's a board member of the Irwin Chamber of Commerce. And Little River Days, he is the brainchild behind that, the Little River Days. Also, he is a former TV news reporter and producer. So I might learn a little. At this time, we may have Mr. L. Wood. Hello, Mr. Lake hello. Wood. Come in. Hello, hello. We had a little technical difficulties. I don't know what was going on, but we Absolutely. are here. Yes, ma'am. Welcome to the Sheila Hill Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hold on. Thank I have so to listen. Much. We have all these accolades. I'm going to have to. Thank you so much for having me. I have my little clapper here. There we go. It's a pleasure. All right. So that was a little about you. So if you could just tell us, tell the audience who you are in a nutshell. What do you like to do? Just give us your spiel. Absolutely. My name is Lakewood. I own Elwood Solutions. We are a branding, marketing, and events firm based in the wonderful city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. We serve pretty much the entire state of North Carolina and Virginia, specializing in branding and marketing and helping businesses, municipalities, utility suppliers, you name it, we've done it, and helping those entities thrive. And we have been in business since 2019. I have gone through several roles um, in other companies during that time. And then last year decided to jump off on my own and take my business full time. Um, I am a former television news reporter and producer, was um, in that field for roughly about five years, moved over into the corporate marketing world and worked as a a regional marketing for a catering department lead uh, for a predominant restaurant chain here in the North Carolina area. And then uh, slid off and decided, hey, you know, it's time to jump into this full, full throttle, make it my, really live out my dream. And thus, Elwood Solutions uh, became my full-time pride and joy. That is awesome. Congratulations to you. I mean, listen, you you can entrepreneur, if you make it past six months, it is worth celebrating because entrepreneurship is not for the weak at heart at all. I don't care what anybody (laughs) says. So congratulations to you. So what, okay, so as you begin to transition, what was your major challenge that you faced to to move over into the full time of entrepreneurship? My main challenge starting off was just 
you know, the fear of the unknown, really, to be honest with you, it was not knowing what the next day would bring. Um, I kind of got in my comfort zone um, working, whether it was in the news industry, then transitioning into the corporate world. I always had that security blanket of I'm going to wake up and go to my nine to five. I'm going to have that. That is my plan A, my plan B and my plan C. And I think just kind of getting over that process and figuring out and really like just taking on the next step and saying, hey, you know, uh, I'm ready. And finding the confidence in myself was was probably the biggest challenge in taking that step. Uh, looking back, I'm so glad that I overcame that challenge and, and didn't allow that challenge to stop me in any way. But just in the present at that time, it was one of the most scariest, just one of the most frightening feelings, the most frightening, it just, it was crazy. It was just such a, a, a challenge, as you said. Yes, definitely so. And I think that's what, you know, a lot of times we hear, we see the stories and we hear people talk about entrepreneurship, but then we see the glitz and the glamour, the Instagram life is what I call it, but the behind the scenes, the piece where you, you're you afraid, you don't know what's going to happen, what's tomorrow going to look like, um, and things like that, people need to understand that it does have the, the good, the bad, and the ugly that comes with entrepreneurship. So getting over that. Oh, and another thing, too, this is a, one subject I spoke on not too long ago, having imposter syndrome. Woo! Talk, listen, impo imposter syndrome can slip in all day when you're in corporate world. You feel okay because you don't really have the weight on your shoulder. You have tasks to do. But when it's your business, what? <laughs> yes, yes. So have you ever dealt with imposter syndrome? Um, I think... Yes and no. It's it's kind of a, uh, I want to say predominantly yes, uh, absolutely. Um, but to, to an extent, also no, meaning like I have been in a bunch of crazy scenarios um, over my life. And I think having, you know, and, and my jobs also set me up for entrepreneurial success. I will say that. It was never a, okay. oh, here's your task to do it. It was always a make your decisions, position it. So unlike many people, I think I got lucky in that in that route and was able to say, hey, you know, this is, this is, it just boosted my confidence, honestly, uh, just okay. being completely honest with you. I kind of was in these positions that allowed me to build up to this, to the step that I'm in now. Okay. Hey, that was, that's great that they was able to, to sort of, in a sense, build you and mold you to prepare you for that thrash that you went. Because listen, for those who don't who are not prepared, ha, it's just like we just gone on yes. about their business. <laughs> so when you find yourself, OK, so when you first started out, what type of support or did you have support surrounding you that helped you? I did. I found support in a lot of places and in places I never thought I would find it. Okay. Um, one of my biggest places that I kind of put, not necessarily in the, the making the jump, but the months thereafter was in my local chamber of commerce. Um, okay. I found some of the best support during that time. I had entrepreneurs to lean on and to guide me and to help me. Um, I was, I'm raised in a family of entrepreneurs. My parents, my grandparents, they were, you know, they were entrepreneurs and um, I come from that background as well. So I had that support that was, you know, there for me and just friends, family, even my colleagues and even some of my leadership um, at my previous job was very supportive in that transition and gave me the boost of confidence that I needed to move into my life as an entrepreneur. Oh, that's great. That is great to have that support because we do have some people who do not have support and they're the first ones leading the way and, and getting the nicks and bruises that comes with it because you don't know. So, um, oh yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations to you and your family for having that experience for you. 
Okay, so if you had to do it all over again, like what would you do different as far as your entrepreneurship journey? Oh, that's a that's a tough one, but it's one that's really got me thinking. Um, do it again. I would probably have to say I would have done it sooner. Oh, that's okay. my. I would have done it sooner. That's my biggest regret is why didn't I do, why didn't I take this late two, three, four, five years ago and go ahead and, and do it? Uh, it's a, it's, I, I regret it. But at the same time, it's one of those things, like, I'm glad I had the experiences I did and I was able to build off of that. But at the same time, I'm like, this is, this is the life that was destined for me. And here I am thriving in it. I just wish I would have done it sooner. Yes. And you know what? I feel, I feel the same way. Even though you go through so much, I cannot see myself doing anything else. I just can't. It's just like, this is who I am. Yes. <laughs> it's in yes. my DNA. I have to do this. Yes. No doubt. Okay. So all right, let's let's get off the entrepreneur piece of it. What what's something that is a fun fact about you? What's a fun fact? What is something that you like or maybe like a hobby or something somebody may not know about you that may be, you know, a little different or unique? I uh, uh, one thing that people people who are close to me know this. I absolutely adore animals. I'm not a dog and cat person. Have a dog, have a cat, but I have uh exotic animals. I've always loved exotic animals. I have a macaw. I have a giant sulcata tortoise. I've had any animal you can think of from a long Burmese python. I've had them all and I enjoy it. But it's something that people, when they see me out and about, they're like, I could never picture you <laughs> having these animals, but it's just, they bring me so much joy. Oh my goodness. That is very unique. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't imagine you saying that. Oh my goodness. Wow. So tell me, okay. So tell me where is your dream vacation? Dream vacation. So going off the exotic animal piece, I have always wanted to go to Australia, oh. the Queensland New and New Zealand, Australia, New Zealand. I want to do them together so bad. Um, it's, it's a dream vacation and it's, it's looking to become reality sooner before late, sooner than late. Sooner rather than later, I can find my words. <laughs> okay, um, but it's it's been my dream vacation since I was probably three or four years old. Wow, that is great that you're walking, you're making plans to it. It's so interesting because that was one of my locations that I wanted to go to as well. Um, I used to work for the airline industry, so we flew all over the world. But I said I wanted to go to Australia. But during the time, I did not know anyone. And my my friends, my girlfriends was like, no, we're going somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> they was like, we're going to South America. We're going to all these other places. I was like, I want to go to Australia. <laughs> so I did not have I did not embark. And that was one of my regrets because one this one girl said, I'll go with you. And I was like, I don't know you. <laughs> you get me into another country and I know they'd be the soul of my liver. So no, no, and no. <laughs> and no. So um, yeah, that's one of my regrets. So please, if you get a chance to go bring me a souvenir back or something. <laughs> Absolutely. That is great. That is so great. Okay, so overall like what is your like on a daily basis how do you get clients so for your for what you do in your elwood solutions how do you get access to clients so i have built a great network um personal and professionally that i can really rely on i do a lot of networking especially through the chamber of commerce Okay. Um, I am always networking, talking with people. And when you get into that business to business atmosphere, and for me being in a business to business industry, that is my number one source of leads. It's getting out there, talking to people, um, especially when you find these entrepreneurs who are, who are just starting out or who have recently hit a hiccup in their life, whether they're, you know, having to restructure, having to change, that's where we're comfortable. And that's 
where we're able to guide and, and make that process a little easier when it comes to the marketing and branding side of things. So okay. I would definitely say that is, is our area of where we're able to pull clients from is in that, that networking atmosphere. Oh, that's great. That, that is awesome because we have so many new entrepreneurs or solopreneurs who try to do everything themselves. We wear so many hats. What can you say to that, that new business owner or that solopreneur in the sense of it's okay to reach out for help? What do you say to them? I tell them that I know a lot of times the excuse is budget. I'm just getting started. I don't know where to turn with the budget that I have. Many of us started with the money we had in our pockets, not wanting to go down that journey of getting into debt. And for those people, re I, I just recommend taking the first step and reaching out. In the marketing field, we I've seen this across the entire industry. A lot of people are very receptive to offering that help. Um, whether it's you've got a three dollar budget or a thirty thousand dollar budget, there is you know there is that that space there where someone can help you bridge that gap. Um, or or like in many cases where I may not have the specialty that a person in my network does. And you just never, I always just recommend reaching out, just reach out to someone who's in the space already, um, yeah. get their advice, take their advice to heart and really just kind of look at your budget, look at the options that are on the table for you and explore those with an open mind because in 99.99999% of any marketing you do, you're going to see a return on your investment. It may not be right away. It right. may not be tomorrow, but it, you're going to see that return on that investment and the money you invest in now is going to help your money grow. It's going to help your business grow and your money grow um, when it comes to, you know, down the road at some point. And I right. think a lot of people come into it with, if I can do it myself, I can make it happen overnight. And they come to find that the reality of that is very uh, far-fetched. It's very hard to reach. And just reaching out to someone like myself can be the best thing for you in many cases. Is it always the best option? Is it always an option? Not necessarily, but mm -hmm. not for everyone. But for majority of the entrepreneurs coming to light in this very competitive, um, where many markets are so saturated, it is the best way to get ahead. It's the best way to get your foot in that door of entrepreneurship to get your your foot in your door in your industry and and boost yourself most definitely most definitely that's some great great information a lot of times especially new entrepreneurs we say well like you're saying it's not in the budget um i can't afford it but at the end of the day sometimes you just can't afford not to do it mm -hmm. you know and it's better to get that guidance at the beginning to propel you to make sure you're even on the right path because the focus that you may have may not be good. It may not be profitable. And I've got two more words to add to my answer to that last question. Okay. Right off. <laughs> Ooh. Right off. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, those are my two words. You are always able to, your marketing services are an expense for your business. You are able to write those off. It is investing in yourself and, and getting that return in that way as well. Most definitely great advice. And you know what? A lot of times when you're talking to someone who, like yourself who have so much knowledge, sometimes you're giving so many free gems that people don't realize it. It's sometimes it's enough to grab to understand how important the services that you offer and then just to even watch you move around. Now, I see you moving around town. I see you. I have <laughs> seen you move. I've seen you at a dance. So just know I see you like <laughs> you're doing I've seen thing. you too. I, I continue to see you doing great things as well. Thank you. Thank you. And I think a lot of times people don't understand just because, especially on social media, they feel like um, I don't see the comments or I don't see the liking, you know, the likes, amount of likes. Keep doing what you're doing. 
any entrepreneur don't focus on the likes don't focus on the comments continue to promote yourself that mean that's free advice right there promote yourself absolutely period and, and, and promoting yourself and getting out there is one of the biggest pieces of one of those gems that you just you know free gems that i would drop is get out there go to networking events you never know how how and what is around the corner as far as partnerships we are always doing another uh, doing partnerships with other companies inside of our industry outside of our industry and it's all for the greater good for our business for their business and it helps us really raise each other together but for an entrepreneur starting out that key component of just networking, being beside other people in the same mindset who know what you're going through is so crucial. That is so true. And you never know who knows someone else that is that puzzle piece that can connect things for you. You know, I know I was at one event and it was just a conversation. We, it was networking. And then they was like, oh, you need to meet so-and-so. So when we met, it was just like, oh my goodness, this is exactly what I need. This is the missing piece. And had I not stepped out and went to that one networking event, I would not have met the next person. And I mean, even now these people are a regular weekly accountability partners, you know, that are very strategic in a lot of things that I do. So that is so important. That's such great advice, Lake. I really appreciate that. I, I think a lot of times we feel like we're the only ones that's doing it and we feel frustrated at times and we feel no one understands. And I, like you were saying, it's very important to be a part of organizations such as a chamber of commerce in your local cities, um, connect with them and, and learn from them as well, because there's great opportunities along with the networking on a regular basis. So definitely check into that. And if you're in the North Carolina area in the Irwin area, Linden, Fatville, <laughs> Get up with Lake. He can help you out and um, help you and assist you in any way possible. At this time, we're going to take a short commercial break and we're going to be right back shortly in a moment. I hope I'm not losing my voice, but we will take a short commercial break. This is really great information, guys. If you want to learn more, you're going to, I'm we're going to get Lake's information for you to follow him as well but he is dropping some major gems for you entrepreneurs learn from those who have already paved the way all right right now for this commercial listen break. if anybody's interested in getting into podcasting grab this book go on amazon grab this book it, it goes with me almost everywhere this book has like a workbook it has places you can fill it in it tells you how to monetize your podcast. It tells you how to set it up. It tells you about sponsorships. It even, listen, go on Amazon and get this book. And this is the Bible for podcasters. Listen, it was ranked number one for in podcasting books. Look right here. Best new podcasting book by Book Authority. Right there. Boom. And a little secret. Y'all, when you grab this book, I think it's page 43. There is a code on there. Listen, you can get access to her, her class, her, her course. Get her course. It's worth hundreds of dollars. But this book is only, it's less than $50. <laughs> Grab this book on Amazon. I'm telling you, I carry it everywhere. She is the best. Grab this book on Amazon. All right. All right. We want to focus on that. Pot. If you're interested in podcasting, that is the number one book to grab. So before the commercial break, we're talking with Lake Wood. He is a, the CEO, the brainchild behind Eldwood Solutions here in the North Carolina area. So please welcome back Mr. Wood. Wood to the stage. Rah. Yay! <laughs> Gotta get my clap and sound, sound effects. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
based on if a tell me the steps that it, an entrepreneur, a new business owner comes to you, what do they need to have done prior to seeing you to be successful? What do you need from them? I tell folks one to have one thing, have an understanding of who your business is, who you are, and what you want to become. We can figure mm. everything out, out when we get to the table and start talking it out as far as budget wise, what your needs are in that moment. Um, because a lot of times as an entrepreneur, we don't know what's available to us. We don't know outside of our industry or even just in business in general, what all the opportunities and all the options are for us. So I tell people, don't focus on finding your options right away. Take that time, figure out who you are, who your business is and who you want to become and allow that to be your guiding principle. Oh, that's great. That's great. So do you help them also try to find their target audience or do they need to do that on their own? Yes. So we have a very complicit, a very, very integrated uh, target market analysis that we do with okay. any business owner that comes to us looking for marketing or branding services, because as much as it helps us with marketing, it also helps us with branding and how we're going to put your brand out there and how we're going to put your brand together. But we do a very extensive search. Um, we compile a lot of data from the census, from just a variety of sources. We have our own, uh, our own marketing research team that actually goes out and we can put on special tasks to go out and grab the information that we're needing at hand to develop that. A lot of times we are able to guide a business owner and understanding, hey, this may be out of your reach right now, but we can give them goals as to when to reach a certain target audience. And we also really, part of that analysis is finding your niche and where you are in your industry. Um, every industry is going to have a variety of niche uh, options that your business can take and find something you're really good at. And we kind of help you, help and guide you in understanding that, hey, these may be opportunities for you. And we kind of really take that analysis very seriously. Another thing that we rely on heavily when understanding a target market is utilizing uh, what we call marketing use plans or MUPs. Those are plans that my team, my marketing research team draft up for different areas. And they do an industry by industry assessment to learn that, for instance, uh, we, we represent a plumber here in Harnett County. And uh, when I say represent, we handle a lot of their marketing and their branding. And we looked at communities. We did our MUP for Harnett County, looked at different areas that did not have a business that many people relied on within there within that community. And we were able to prepare that business with these communities that did not have that service, that resource. And it really helped them. I think we had a 900 or so percent just on defining their target market and an ROI just on that one, that one assessment that we did and paired where they were at. Okay. Now this sounds really technical. This sounds really, really technical. So you do, you have a, a team that does the market analysis, all of that. Then you're going to ask them, you're going to help them with branding. You're going to help them with the target market. You're going to help them. So basically you're a one-stop shop is what I'm hearing. Yes. We are <laughs> full service from start to not even finish. We never stop. We are your okay. one-stop okay. shop, um, full service. And we can, we, a lot of people don't realize that, um, for any marketing company, what, what our capabilities are, whether you're coming to us and you need assistance with just the, the legwork, as far as defining that target market, if you decide, Hey, you know, I don't need anybody, or I want to be, take that extra step and be more authentic in my business and handle all my social media. We got you girl. I mean, we're, we're, we're there to help support you and get that legwork started to where you can be successful in that journey. And a lot of people don't realize that you don't have to give away your, your, 
marketing potential, your personality to an agency, we can help you fill in those gaps where you don't have it. Or if you're like here, you know, you take it, we do it. We're all game for that as well. We're going to help you in the best way we can. That is awesome. Oh my goodness, Lake. I love it. Okay. Now you mentioned about having the niche in your, your industry. What do you say to the entrepreneur? Because entrepreneurs, a lot of entrepreneurs are cre very creative. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they think outside the box. It's almost, you can almost pick an entrepreneur out. Um, the way we think, sometimes we have ADHD. Let's just put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you say to the person who is on team do too much like me? And I'm all over the place. I have this, you know, I'm on this project. I'm working on this business. And it's like, oh, it's like squirrel. You know, you, your attention is yeah. all over the place. <laughs> what do you say to the entrepreneur who have not had a chance to sort of narrow down or they said, well, I can do this good and I can do this good. So I'm trying to do them all. What do you say to that person? I have a very controversial opinion, actually, on this topic. Ooh, okay. I say you can do it all. Just where you direct your energy and your focus needs to be at what you're good at and what people want you to be, what need from you. Okay. Um, you can do it all. I mean, I've got a thousand different things going on at once. And it's the life of an entrepreneur. We're going to have to tackle things. And it's great to have the community service aspect. I love doing my community service and how I can help. And it's, I don't get, I space myself enough where I don't get burnt out. But my energy, when it comes time to putting it together, my energy goes into what I know I'm good at and what is expected of me and what is needed of me by my clients, my community, my leads that I'm getting in day after day. And okay. just, really focusing on that as my main source of energy, but it's, we're human beings. We're going to do it all. We're going to attempt to do it all. Like you said, the entrepreneurial spirit, that is it. Yeah. And I think that when we, you know, compile it and say, Hey, you know, these are, this is what's on my plate, but here's what I'm going to focus my energy on. It, it comes mm -hmm. out good for all of us. Most definitely. Most definitely. I, I love that. Um, okay, so you mentioned burnout. How do you avoid burnout because we do so much? How do you have that balance of self care not to burn out? I just recently did a, 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 a social media post and I was asking, What's your main st struggles as an entrepreneur? And a lot of it was burnout, anxiety, financial, and the other one was imposter syndrome. So let's talk about burnout. How do you how do you handle that? It's so funny that you mentioned this because just the other day in my sales call with my account executives, I found this graph that was showing a battery. And this is how I let off our, our sales uh, sales call the other day. And your battery, so many of us charge it when it's empty, when we mm. should be charging it when it's half full. And take that time before we get down to that that one percent. Take that time at 50% and say, hey, I need a day. I need a day or two, or I need an hour or two if we're doing it day by day. And just saying, you know, let me recharge. Let me take my mind off of it for a little bit. And for so many of us, that looks so different. For me, some weeks, even for some of us, it looks different week to week. For me, someday, the one little hair or that 50% that keeps me from my burnout is going out to lunch. Or it's taking a day off or I do this a lot. I will remove myself from a heavier weighted project and put myself on a smaller one for the day to give myself that relief and get my mind off of that, that big hurdle that I've got to overcome. And it just kind of helps me prevent that burnout. Now, as an entrepreneur, yes, we all get burnout. I, I have get burnt out more than I would like to admit, but it happens, yeah. especially when we have event season and we're running all over the place and it feels like I don't have time. And it gets to the point where when you go to bed at night, you're like, I shouldn't be sleeping. And it's just, <laughs> but you need it. And trying to overcome that has been, um, it is 
one in its own, a very, um, a very challenging part of entrepreneurship, yes. but it's one that I think is more obtainable than many of us, even in our own conscience, realize. Most definitely, most definitely. Great advice because I love here being here at the Sheila C. Hill Show. We just don't talk about it. We want to give people solutions. So that was very great detailed solutions that someone can use to avoid the burnout. And I love the analogy of charge the battery before it, before it gets to the 1%, <laughs> before you're out. That's almost remind me of when I have to get my gas, I hate stopping and getting gas. Like, like <laughs> what? I got to get gas again. Oh my goodness. So now I just want to tell myself, okay, if I get gas when it's half full or half empty, then I don't have to wait till it gets almost. And I'm just like, am I going to make it to the gas station? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's the same. That's the same idea charge your battery before it gets too low boom who would have thought that makes so much sense okay so so tell me other than what you offer with your businesses with your business what how can people contact you or do you have something to offer what is your yeah what do you have do you do you mentor people do you coach people do you have an offer that you want to let the people know about yeah, I am always able to be reached. I'm always on Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn. My Instagram is Lakewood underscore TV. And I've gotten back into the world of putting my content out there. I got burnt out there for a little while and wasn't able to take the time to make and create the content. I have my own podcast that's starting up in September where I share those little bits and pieces of Information. It's called All Angles with Elle Wood, and it is a very, com uh, very compulsive podcast as far as we talk about everything. Um, and it's it's just the the side of entrepreneurship you don't get to see on a day to day. Entrepreneurs have fun. We have that freedom, but that's enough on that plug. But I don't. I mean, I'm always here to help someone. If you know, you're at a loss, you don't know what to do, give me a call, um, DM me on Instagram, send me a message on Facebook. I'm always going to be there to help and guide um, and, and mentor in that way. I love helping people, love being out in the community. And I'm just, I'm always there in that aspect. Okay. And what was that social media ha handle again? So my Instagram is Lakewood underscore TV. That's also my handle on threads. Um, I also have my Facebook, which is just Lakewood um, and LinkedIn Lakewood as well. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So you all got you. you everyone hears that this, please go and follow Lakewood, please, please, please. Okay. Do you have any last words? What's some advice that you would like to give someone or, or your last words, anything, any subject? Join your chamber of commerce. Your local chamber ah. of commerce is your best investment, marketing investment that you're ever going to make in your business. I will live by that. I'm a marketing professional by day, and I've received more support from my chamber of commerce than anything. Okay, so I have a question. So someone <laughs> is the chamber of commerce in another city, okay? And they said, why don't you join? I said, well, my business is not in that city. And they said, it doesn't matter. You can just still join and we can assist you. I didn't know that. Is that is that how you all work too? Absolutely. So the Chamber of Commerce is, we're a member of six Chamber of Commerce, uh, different chamber organizations across the state. We're day-to-day -day joining more. Chamber of Commerce is their primary thing is offering you that education, that motivation. Mm -hmm. They offer great events uh, for a business like us. We do get a lot off of our chambers because we are business to business. Uh, more consumer business to consumer based businesses can also benefit greatly by joining a variety of chamber of commerces okay. because you're going to see, and a, a, you know, after the pandemic, we've seen a lot more digital workshops. You don't have to be in that city to learn the, variant of different things, uh, okay. different skills, 
I know for me, I'm getting ready next Wednesday um, on July 26th in Coates, North Carolina. We've got our Meta for Business. We're talking, it's a great workshop that we've got to offer from Elwood Solutions, but we're teaming up with the Coates, or Coates uh, Greater Area Chamber of Commerce and the Irwin Area Chamber of Commerce to put this, um, this class on. And it's little educational pieces like that. And I know comparing my curriculum for my course to another one that was up in the Raleigh area, they're completely different, but they complement each other so well. So having those resources in these those different chamber chamber organizations is going to be so beneficial for you, especially when it comes to events. We all love a good event. I love events. I love community events and being able to see what these people, these professionals are putting on in these different communities that is there to generate that commerce that's there to generate that economic stability it's just such a beautiful thing to watch oh wow that is so awesome that is a great plug for the chamber of commerce throughout the world guys okay so y'all heard it from him join your chamber of commerce there's so much information and so much support that they can offer you as well. So listen, get into it as soon as possible. And at this time, thank you very much, Lake Wood, for joining us today. I really enjoyed the conversation. Until we meet again, listen, and much success on your upcoming podcast. If you need any help, let me know. But you sound like you're professional because, listen, you was a TV producer. You got this. <laughs> Yes, I'll definitely be reaching out for help because this podcast world is something else to navigate, I will tell you. Sheila, thank you so much for having me. I've really appreciated it. You're welcome. Take care. <laughs> okay, guys. Yes, it was a pleasure to have Mr. Lake Wood on today. I tell you, that was some really great gems. So listen, get into it into it yes 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 so so excited so thank you for joining today the sheila c hill show listen if you have any feedback if lake says something that resonates with you just let us know what what really hit that for you and gave you that inspiration um just comment and let us know what you liked liked about the episode on today and if you see anything that resonates with you if you learned anything just consider liking subscribing and sharing and if you have a extraordinary story that you would like to share we are accepting guests on the sheila c hill show just go on the sheila c hill show.com and click the little link where it says be our guest at the very top and you you can register to be our guest. So in the meantime, just know that you are loved and you are highly appreciated. And whatever you do in life, just understand you still must be your unapologetically self. Do your best that you can do. Don't worry about anyone else. You are special. You are loved and you appreciate it. So at the end of the day, let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go. Until next time on the Sheila C. Hill Show. So glad you all was here today. Yes.